I want to talk to you today about how to teach the Bible by setting an example. And to set this up, let me imagine that we were going camping, and uh, we we're about three miles, let's say, from the trailhead. And uh, I met you there at the top of the trailhead, and I said to you, in order to get to our camping spot, you just need to walk down this trail about a mile, and there'll be a fork in the road. You need to take the right fork, go up about half a mile, down another hill, then there's going to be a valley. You need to walk across that valley and move slightly to your right. Uh, there's going to be a big rock. You can go to the left of that rock, go up, go up the hill, up that hill, down that valley, cross a river, go up river just a little bit, going to find another big rock, go up there. Are you getting a little bit lost? What if I simply said to you, follow me? Follow me. Come on, let's follow me. And this is what you want to do as a Christian Bible teacher. You want to say to people, follow me. And the big idea I want us to look at today is the path is easier when you have someone else to follow. And if you want to make disciples for Christ through your Bible teaching, you want to simply say to them, follow me as I follow Christ. Let's look at what the Bible says. The Bible says, John 13, 15, I have set you an example. These are the words of Jesus. Jesus said, he washed their feet and then he said to them, I have set you an example as you should do as I have done for you. And you might be tempted to think, well, that's good enough for Jesus. Jesus set an example, but oh, who am I to set an example? Well, Paul said this as well. He said, you became imitated of us. We get our word mimic from that word. You mimicked us and, and of the, the Lord. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, he says, follow my example, using that same Greek word, mimic. Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. And you, teacher, need to say to your students, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Start your day with your Bible on your lap as I start my day with my Bible on my lap. Memorize Scripture as I memorize Scripture. Give as I give. Serve as I serve. Pray as I pray. Live the life you see me living. This sound, may sound a little bit pr prideful, but I want to invite you to see that to say anything else is fundamentally to say to your people, Christianity hasn't worked for me. I hope you have better luck. You don't want to say that. You want to say, Christian living has worked for me. I have come, I haven't done it perfectly, and you, and you can't follow me in every detail. And there's areas that I'm still looking up the mountain and, and uh, would point you up there with me and say, let's go there, there together. But as a generalization, you want to say to your people, I have laid hold of the John 10, 10 life, the, the abundant life, the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control life. Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Philippians 3.17 says, Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters. Just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. So Paul is saying here, not just follow my example, but follow any one example who is living as we do. And uh, 1 Thessalonians 1, seven. and so you became a model. You became, we get our word, the first part of uh, the word uh, typewriter, type, uh, part of the word. And the idea is we have stamped on you the image of Christ. We came to live the image of Christ and we have stamped on you the image of Christ and now you are modeling. You can stamp that on others as well. You became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. 1 Corinthians 4, 16 and 17. Therefore I urge you to imitate me. For this reason I have sent to you Timothy. Now that's a curious thing. You'd think he'd say, I, for this reason I urge you to imitate me. For this reason I am coming to you. But he said, I have so stamped on to Timothy, the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness life, the John 10, 10 life. I have so discipled Timothy that I want you to imitate me. And in order to get you to imitate me, I am actually sending Timothy to you so that you can follow him. And the big idea again is the path is easier when you have someone to follow. And if you want to teach the Bible, you want to teach by example. You want to teach by setting the example for, before them and saying to them, follow me as I follow the example of Christ. Now to illustrate this, I'd like to uh, uh, use an illustration that is near and dear to my heart, and that is the idea of tennis. In order to be a tennis player, you need to hit, learn to hit at least five shots. That is the forehand, the backhand, the serve, the overhead, and the volley. That is the, the shot at the net. And technically speaking, you could have two of those, but they're more or less uh, this, the, the same, so we're going to group them together. But uh, in order to hit a forehand successfully, you've got to know 12 things. Let me put all 12 on the screen here. And uh, there's the ready position, kind of getting up on your feet. There's a split step, little little um, uh, hop just about the time the other guy's hitting the ball. We got to know what an eastern grip is. Could use a western grip or a semi western, but we're not going to use a continental grip. We got to get clear as to what that, that is. We got to do what tennis players call a unit turn. That is, if the ball is coming to my forehand over here, I want to move my whole body like, like, like this. Beginning tennis players will tend to just wag their arm out here on the side, and we don't want to do this. We want to take a unit turn, and we want to hit the ball with the, the big part of our body uh, turning this way. Uh, we have a, what we call the pat the dog motion. 
And that is when I'm bringing my hand back, I have my hand facing, if I were to let go of the, the, the racket, my hand will be facing directly down at the court. Again, beginning players, beginning tennis players, if you just turn them loose, they'll tend to think, Imagine I'm hitting the ball that way. Uh, if, if I'm going to hit the ball like this, then I'm going to have the ball like, like, like this. But we don't want to do that. We want to take the ball like this, and then there's what we call a loop and not pendulum. And that is, again, beginning tennis players will kind of uh, go, go like this and go, go like this. And we don't want to do that. We don't want to do a pendulum. We want to do a, a loop. And then there's this racket drop. We want to lead with our body. There's a doorknob turn. While all this is going on, we're actually turning our wrist like you would, pronating the color, a wrist like, like, like you would turn a, 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 do, a doorknob. We want to hit the ball flat. That is, when at the point of contract, contact, the racket is going to be more or less up and down. It'll be slightly up. But the tendency, again, for beginning tennis players is to pitch it like a nine iron. We don't want to do that. We want to hit it flat, and we want to come up this way. You getting all this down? There's a famous book on, on tennis called The Inner Game of Tennis. There's actually been a number of sequels to that, The Inner Game of Music and The Inner Game of Golf and, and so on and so on. And what this tennis coach discovered was that he, he started out teaching tennis this way. He'd say, these are the five strokes you've got to master. Here are the 12 parts of the, th this particular stroke. And uh, how can you remember all that? You've got about two seconds to hit the ball. And so he said to his students, just follow me. All right. Just watch me hit the ball and kind of imagine yourself hitting the ball as I hit the ball. And he discovered that they would do about 10 out of 12 things right. And uh, and, 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 and it is a great example of, of the idea that if you will just set an example for people, be gentle as I am gentle, don't grumble as I don't grumble, and so on and so on and so on. And the big idea is the path is easier when you have someone else to follow. Now let me give you three or four corollaries of this uh, and then we'll be done. The first corollary is it, is this. Different people can provide a good example in different arenas. In other words, as an overall statement, you want to say to your people, follow my example as I follow Christ. But there's some areas that you might not can follow. In other words, in my particular case, if you want to know how to lose 50 pounds, I could actually tell you how to do that. I could tell you how to keep 40 of it off. I haven't kept all of it off, but 40 of it I've, I've kept off. If, uh, if you want me to tell you how to memorize a, a, a thousand verses, I'm not quite there completely, but I, I'm on, on the way. I could, I could walk, you with, uh, walk with you on, on that path. If you want to know how to uh, start your day with your Bible in your lap, I know how to do that. If you want to know how to survive the death of a child, I got some people in my church that can help you with that, but I can't help you with that. And the big idea is that different people can help you with different arenas in, 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 in life. Corollary number two is this, is that your people can be an example to somebody else. You can't be an example in every way, but you want to say to your people, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. But in this particular arena, you might follow Bob's example. You might follow someone else's example. Corollary number three is churches need examples too. I've heard people say, well, you know, our church, we don't follow Willow Creek. We don't follow Saddleback. We don't follow North Point. We don't follow First Baptist Church Houston. We don't follow any ex human examples. We just look to Jesus. And it sounds real spiritual, but the Bible says uh, that, that uh, he, Paul says to the, Th the Thessalonians, and so the message rang out from you, and uh, you are a model to all the churches in that area. And I think you would do well to read, uh, I'm re-listening to right now, Andy Stanley's book, Deep and Wide. Let me be clear. I don't agree with everything Andy Stanley ever did or said, but I think I can learn some things for, from him. Uh, I'm reading again also a Gaining by Losing by J.D. Greer, great, uh, a great book. Just finished Lasting in Impact in the classic book, The Purpose Driven uh, a Church. Pretty much anything by Tom Rainer is worth reading. And I think you would do well to read these books and ask yourself, how can these churches be a model for us? And uh, corollary number four, you can follow examples living or dead. And the idea there is you can follow examples in person or, th or through the media. And I think about the, uh, the biography of the life of Dawson Trotman. I never get to meet Dawson Trotman. He died the year I was born. But my life has been profoundly impacted by the life of Dawson Trotman. Much of my love of scripture memory comes from following the example of Dawson Trotman, even though I never met Dawson Trotman. But I was influenced him through the media of books. Uh, and been a lot of uh, uh, good Christian movies come out. My wife and I watched just the other day the book or the movie uh, I Can Only Imagine. And if you grew up in an abusive home, there's a scene in that movie where uh, the, the boy's maybe in junior high at that point, and he's arguing with his dad over breakfast, and uh, things get kind of heated up, and his, his dad grabs the breakfast plate, walks over behind him, and just breaks the plate over the back of his head. He describes him as a monster, but later describes him as a man I wanted to imitate. 
And if you want to know how to survive, how to get past your past, and how to survive living in an abusive home, you might watch that movie. I can only imagine. If you have doubts, and who doesn't have some doubts about the Christian faith? If you have doubts, I would encourage you to, to watch the movie, The Case for Christ, and watch the story of Lee Strobel as he questioned the, uh, the, the things of, 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 of the Lord and the Bible, the veracity of the Bible, and, and so on. And as you see that example of someone who, who investigated Scripture, I think it will help you. But the big idea is, teacher, you want to say to your people, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ.